Hey everyone, I'm so excited that you decided to stop by. I have such a great DIY for you. We are going to make a wood storage chest that will also double as a sleek modern couch. There will be a list of items needed with correct measurements provided for you in the description box below. The very first thing you're going to need to do is create the front and the back of the chest. You will attach six four foot long one by four boards together by attaching them to two one by one boards at each end. You will need to leave a small gap beside each one by one board to provide space to attach the boards that will create the sides of the chest. I'm showing you how you need to leave a gap with my hands here now. The sides of the chest are created by six two feet long one by four boards that will be attached to the same one by one boards used to create the front and back. Make sure to draw lines where you have drilled holes for the front and the back so you can taper the screws needed for attaching the sideboards. You will also want to pre-drill holes before attaching the boards with screws. As you can see, my project was nowhere near perfect, but that's what I'm all about. Learning as I go, learning to use different tools and having a good time. And in the end, my project turned out so great. So now that I have pre-drilled the holes, I am now screwing on the side boards. If you have an extra hand, someone to help you do this step, then it might be nice to have someone hold the board while you screw them in, but I did not, and like I said, it turned out just fine.
the screws that I use to uh, attach the side boards to the one by one board are tapered to the screws that I used to attach the front and the um, back boards to the one by one board. That's extremely important so you don't hit the other screw and ruin your project. This is what it looks like on the inside once you have attached the side boards to the same one by one board that the front and back boards were attached to. So I have one side done and now I need to attach the other two foot long one by four boards for the other side. It's really smart to use wood glue. Just put down a little bit of wood glue before you screw in your boards. Just adds a little bit more adhesion. So now that both sides, the front and the back, have been created, you need one plank for the bottom of the chest. So that's what you're seeing here. One plank that you will add and screw in to that same one by one board that both the front and back and sides are screwed into. So that is the bottom plank there. And I screwed it into those one by one boards. You also want to taper your screws to screw on the bottom so you don't hit either the side or the front or back screws. It's starting to come together. You can see that I put wood glue along the sides of the bottom plank just to close up any holes that may be there. I had to let it dry overnight, but once it had dried, it made a really nicely sealed box. So this is a diagram that I drew of the top lid of the chest. So you're going to want six one by four pieces of wood just like you did for the front and the back. Then you are going to want three one by four boards that you are going to place towards the middle of the six boards. So the three one by four boards will be two feet long and you will measure 14 inches in, place one board, then you will measure 10 inches, and you'll you see how where the measurements are is the, where the center of the board is placed. There is a reason that you leave a space on each side of the lid, which I will show you here in a minute. So this is what the lid looks like when it's done, but I am going to show you how to put it together. I ended up making a mistake and only attached five boards instead of six. So I will show you how to fix how I ended up fixing that. So make sure that you're attaching six one by four boards instead of five. So 
I laid the boards on the ground and again here you only see five boards but you're going to want to attach six boards together to these two feet long one by four planks. And remember the measurements that I showed you 10 inches in or 14 inches in on each side and then 10 inches between the boards themselves. Make sure you pre-drill your holes before you screw the boards together. If you don't have a drill, drills are very cheap to find on Amazon and I will link in the description box below a drill that you can purchase for not very much money. You're going to take another piece of that one by one wood and you're going to attach it inside of the box to each of the one by one pieces of wood that all sides are attached to. At this point, you are going to place the lid on top of the box to measure where you will place the hinges. In order to place the hinges, you will need to assemble another four foot, one by four piece of wood to the back of the top of the box. See how that comes apart those are not attached this is the piece of wood that your hinges will attach to here you will see I had to cut out a small piece of wood because my measurements were kind of funky monkey which is fine like I said this was not perfect but it turned out so great in the end So I simply used another piece of the 1x4 wood to place perpendicularly to the lid. And you can see how the hinges are placed. The one part of the hinge goes on the seventh piece of wood while the rest of the hinge lays across what you created for the lid. Now that I have opened this up, you can see how I had to make do because I forgot to use six pieces of wood instead of five. But I did have to add this little piece of wood here on the back to screw in the hinge to. So make sure that these pieces that you add to the lid are long enough, but do not stretch to the very end so you can close the lid. So you do want a small gap at the very end of the lid. Now that the chest is complete, we've started on the couch part of this project. So 
you will simply screw in this plank to the one by four piece of wood that you attached perpendicularly. This is what it looks like when you attach the back. Now we are going to start upholstering the couch itself. So I used a three inch piece of foam that I got at Home Depot and you want to cover it with batting. I simply used my hot glue gun wrapped the batting around the top of the foam, flipped it over, and attached the batting with hot glue. So the batting does not need to cover the full underside of the piece of foam. It just needs to cover the top and the sides. I'm trying to show you that this is the underneath side of the foam and you will flip it over. Here I'm just showing you how I folded the batting so there weren't any weird creases or bumps. I got this gray, dark gray, charcoal gray suede fabric from Joann's Fabric, and it was only $9 a yard, and then I used a 40% off coupon. Once you lay the piece of foam covered with batting down on the top of the seat, you're going to want to wrap the fabric around and use a staple gun to staple it to the underneath side of the lid. Make sure the fabric is stretched so there are no creases in the fabric on the seat. So to wrap the fabric around the hinges, I cut out slits in the fabric and then just tucked the fabric in under right above the hinge. Then I wrapped the fabric down and through and then stapled it to the underneath side of the lid. So this is the underneath side of the lid that I'm showing you now. You're going to want to fold and staple the fabric so it has really nice beautiful creases. And make sure you stretch the fabric again so there, there, it doesn't get all bumpy and creasy when people start to sit on it and use it. I ended 
up wrapping the fabric all the way over the underneath side of the lid so when you open the lid it has this beautiful sleek look to it When I got to the end, I simply tucked the fabric in underneath and then stapled it at the very end. This way you won't have any fraying pieces hanging out. Stapling in a straight line creates more of a sleek look. these pieces of wood along the outside of the back plank of wood so the plank does not crack Now I'm going to show you how to upholster the backrest of the couch. I used the same size cut of foam for the back that I did for the seat. I also used three inch thick piece of foam and covered it with batting. You're going to want to attach the fabric to the back part of the seat and then tucking the foam into the fabric, wrapping the fabric around to the back of the couch and then stapling it there. So here I am showing you how I have stapled the fabric to the back plank. Then I'm gonna wrap that piece of foam up and staple it to the back of the couch, just like I have here. Here I am showing you how I folded and stapled the fabric to the back part of the couch. Make sure that at the sides and wherever you're folding the fabric that you do it as neatly and as taut as possible. This is the back of the couch and I just wrapped it around and folded the fabric underneath when I got to the end and stapled in a straight line to make it look as sleek as possible. This suede fabric is just gorgeous.
make sure you pull the fabric so it is extremely tight. Now I am doing the same on the other side. So when I was shutting the lid, I noticed that the lid was catching my fingers and it would be nice to have some grooves in the wood where you could shut the lid and have a space for your fingers. So all I did was measure where I wanted three grooves and I used an X-Acto knife and started cutting out grooves in the wood make sure you have a really sharp exacto knife to do this and please watch your fingers Look at my floor, that's hilarious. Then I just took a piece of sandpaper and uh, sanded down the grooves so they would be nice and smooth. These grooves looked so pretty once they were all sanded down. See how gorgeous those grooves are once they were done? I was so excited about this. Now we are going to start attaching the arms of the couch. I attached one piece along the top and one piece along the bottom of each side. You're gonna wanna take these one by one pieces of wood and sand them down because these will be where people will be resting their arms and so you want them to be as smooth as possible. So you could use a palm sander or just take a piece of sandpaper and do it by hand, which is what I did. Don't mind the cushions all over in my living room. I'm also reupholstering my living room couch. So that's why those bare cushions are all over the place. Wow. 
then you're going to attach these pieces of wood to the horizontal pieces of wood that you attach to each side. It's up to you how tall you want them, depending on where you want the arm to rest. I am showing you how to change from a drill bit to being able to actually screw the screw into the wood. Just in case you don't know how to do that. These screws were a lot larger and a lot longer because I needed to get through a larger surface. So it was a little bit more difficult, but I ended up getting it done just fine. So this is how it looked once it was done. You can see the strategic placing of each piece. Once I had this done, I took two pieces of the one by four and attached one on the inside and one on the top to create sort of an L shape. Then I attached a plank of wood cut to the correct measurements to the outside of the armrest. This is what it looked like when I was done. There's a little cubby there, which is where you're going to place a piece of one inch foam. It will fit right in that cubby there. and it only goes down to the seat part of the couch. Then I also attached a piece of one inch foam to the outside. And I did this using hot glue. I then cut a piece and attached it to the top because this will fold over with the fabric to make a round cushiony armrest. You're going to want to cut a slit in the very top of this foam piece so when you go to staple the rounded part of the armrest, you'll be able to reach the wood itself. So just fold that down, grab your staple gun, and staple it into those slits that you've created.
stapled the first set of staples a little bit farther apart and then went back and put staples in between. You wanna do your best to make sure that where you're stapling is as straight a line as possible. Once I had that done, I covered it with batting and I attached it with hot glue. Then I draped the same fabric over the entire armrest and tucked it down on the inside. So once you drape the fabric, go ahead and grab your staple gun and start stapling along that same line that you've already made. I stapled kind of far apart and then I went back and stapled in between. This seemed the easiest to keep a straight line. I also used the palm of my hand to push up against the staple gun. To get the fabric around this post, I did the same thing that I did when I wrapped it around the hinges. I cut a small slit where I could tell the fabric needed to go around the post. Then I pulled it out. and cut out a piece. I am showing you how to tuck the fabric underneath and staple. Then you're going to wrap this under and staple that under there as well. Make sure you pull the fabric as tight as possible and as cleanly and neatly as possible.
once I had it stapled, I found this trim at Walmart to put along the staples on the armrests. I also used these wire nails to hammer them into the wood. So I simply placed one of the nails in between each one of the pieces of trim and hammered, hammered it into the wood. You can find this trim at Walmart in the fabric section where the buttons are. You want to make sure that when you're hammering in the nails that you hammer them in in a, as straight a line as possible. I then did the exact same thing down the front of each arm. This is simply to cover the staples where they are most visible and to add a decorative element. This is the finished product. Look at how nice that trim looks. This turned out so great, you guys. I'm telling you, it couldn't have turned out better. This was for my son's room. He has a place to store more of his stuff and a place for him and all of his friends to sit when they come over. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspired you to create your own chest and couch. Please comment below if you did and show me what you've created. I would love to see it. Also, please leave me any comments of what you would like me to create next. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Remember, you are beautiful and you are enough. See you in my next video.